Welcome everyone to the webinar for Universal Commercial Capital. We'll be getting started in just a moment. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Linda Pliegas, the editor and founder of Realty 411 Magazine and Network. Linda, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time, and we promise we're going to make it very worthwhile for you. Now, today, our financial webinar is to help you get more deals done. We want to make sure that you have all the answers about what private lending is and how private capital can help you fund your real estate transactions. So today we hope to shed some light on private lending and we want to make sure to help you increase your chances of getting all your transactions funded. So we're going to start off with a very special video that was put together just for this webinar today by Universal Commercial Capital. We hope you enjoy it. Hello everybody, my name is Milica Kristic and I'm Sales Executive in Universal Commercial Capital. Today with us we have my beautiful colleague Ivy Baca and she is the Vice President of Sales in Universal Commercial Capital. Hello Ivy, how are you? Hi Milica, how are you? Oh, I'm great. Uh, tell me, how is being in, in real estate these days? Do you have a lot of job to do? Oh, it's it's been quite busy and I really thought it, it just wouldn't be because of the current situation right now, but um, it has. So uh, we are getting a lot of calls, a lot of inquiries. Um, a lot of things have been, um, a lot of, uh, I, I would say a lot of prospects have come in and request more of our fix and flip, which we're going to be discussing today. Yes, we're going to talk about fix and flip because these days everybody is asking about fix and flip and uh, fix and flip business is growing and it's getting a little bit wild. That's why we are talking today about fix and flips and especially about inquiries that are declined. So um, when we talk about, when we start talking about fix and flip, flip, based on sales department and all inquiries received lately, what are the main reasons fix and flip are being turned down? Um, well, the main, main reason I would say right now, uh, we're not taking newbies, we're not taking unexperienced flippers. Um, so there is a minimum of experience that is required, which is uh, at least three in the past 24 months um, of, of flips in the past 24 months, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And will the experience be the same if it's heavy or light we have? Um, I would say uh, a light rehab, it's a lot easier as long as, um, as long as we're not going over the ARV. Um, there's not much really to look, I mean, we do look at track record and everything else that's on, on, on there to look at, but when it's heavy rehab, um, I would say it's, 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 consider to to have the borrower have that past experience so he would need to have at least one you know in his background um to check mm -hmm. so yeah because there's a square footage added there's units added uh or um or more to it more of a construction kind of and there is also more money in stake so mm -hmm. we want that experience as a heavy rehab um flipper mm -hmm. and uh since we are talking about heavy rehab and adding square footage would conversions qualify um no conversions do not qualify right now we're not taking any conversions if it's like a, you know a, a duplex and turn into a uh, adding another um not adding i'm sorry converting it into um uh a condo 
or something like that. It just wouldn't qualify. Right now, conversions period is not qualifying. Mm -hmm. We're only taking light and heavy rehab, uh, light cosmetic and heavy would be um, adding units perhaps. Mm -hmm. And can you give me like example of the deal we had to wait, uh, which didn't go through because the borrower was missing architect letters signed and stamped? Uh, yes, uh, we just had one and um, and I, I was really excited about this one because everything was going smoothly. The bar had the experience, the track record, um, you know, the permits were in place. Um, everything that is required for a fix and flip was there. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, the bar didn't have the um, architect letters signed and stamped which is needed. We need to have an architect opinion letter that needs mm -hmm. to be signed a stamp when they're adding units or when they're expanding um, square footage. Um, and we were almost at the end of the process. And this is something that I think everyone should keep in, in mind. Um, again, when you're adding square footage, we want to see that the bar has that experience. Otherwise, it's going to kill the deal if you don't have mm -hmm. an architect in place you don't have a the right contractor in place to let you know what, exactly what you need so yeah that was that was awful because we got almost almost to the end and that was one requirement to get the deal done and to mm -hmm. well i think that part is the most difficult in this kind of business when you have to say no <laughs> yes exactly uh, it's it's very hard it's very hard to say I'm sorry, <laughs> we can't take, we can't do this. I yes, would love no, to say to every so, deal that comes in, I would love to say, yes, let's do it, done. I know, I just wanted to say that we put so much passion in every deal that we are getting, in every inquiry, and we are so excited and so there with the people. And then when something came wrong, we have to say no. And it's hard for us too. <laughs> As you yeah. said, we would like to say yes to all. <laughs> But tell me, another reason would be if credit is low, right? Uh, yes. Um, we do require a minimum FICO of 620. Um, but I'm just not going to decline a deal because the borrower has really, really bad FICO, but he has the, a lot of experience, for example. If he mm -hmm. has more than seven or eight in his, track re in his back record for the past two years, um, you know, it would be something that we can consider because what we look for again is experience. If the borrower mm -hmm. has experience, we know that our money um, that we're lending, it's not going to go to something to, that someone it's not aware of, or maybe um, I would say um, a newbie is doing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we, we like to see experience, even if you fight goes low, we can do the deal. But if you have no experience and your FICO is low, unfortunately, it's a no. Right now, it's a no. And what about track records? Because that goes along with the credit check. Um, yes, uh, we do verify track uh, background. Um, and we do that at the beginning of every uh, scenario or every deal that it's um, pre-approved and ready to move forward. And um, one thing that it's a it's a deal killer. It's when we have financial crime record on on the background check, and we don't know this. Of course, you know we're able to mm -hmm. see the background record, and it states that maybe they have some judicial or some something on there. And we ask for the bar to give us a letter of explanation what exactly happened, or you know back then or whenever. And um, when they automatically say that it's something that has to do with financial, then it's just like, again, it's a deal killer. And um, we say no. We just had one. Um, and I was very sad to say that to, to one of our clients, especially right now during current situation, we're more critical, we're more conservative. And um, I was very, very sad again to say to this one, uh, bar of our uh, of ours to say no to him because of course this goes back eight years ago um but it's still there right now mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a no it's it's a deal killer 
Well, this situation is already heavy for all of us. And especially when we are trying to make business and to help others to make their business. And it's, it's really challenging. And mm -hmm. if we have a borrower with a good FICO and good experience, what is another motive that would have his deal declined? Um, well, location. Location. Mm -hmm. um, we are taking very... Um, good luck well i would say average location too um and uh but we do check crime records we're getting a lot of deals from illinois by the way because we do lend nationwide we're getting a lot of deals in illinois and just for people that are in illinois right now mm -hmm. um, please consider checking crime record in that area a specific area um we are also looking at rural areas if it's a rural mm -hmm. area then it's definitely a no we're not taking anything that's you know in out of nowhere in the middle of nowhere um we want to be able to have the right population in that specific area to be able to lend yes that is something that you advise to the borrowers that coming to to ucc Oh, yes. If they're ready to invest um, and ready to, you know, get their deals, their fix and flip. I'm sure experienced flippers know this, um, but the people that had two or three, yes, look a lot into the location, exactly mm -hmm. where it's at. Um, it has to be populated and uh, uh, average um, and low crime uh, risk. Mm -hmm. And what about borrowers coming with a property that is free and clear, but need cash out and rehab? Uh, yes, we are actually, good thing that you pointed that out, because uh, we're working on a deal right now that it's, uh, the property is free and clear, and, um, and they're trying to rehab the property and have a little bit of cash out. Now, we are okay with taking cash out, but as long as, you know, there's not so much money in stake, um, we like to see at least 20%, um, you know, off the borrower's money at risk. So mm -hmm. um, for this one, uh, for example, and if I can just bring up the scenario for you, um, let me see if I can find it here, but uh, it's a good thing that this guy bought the property cash he had it for a while. Of course, he didn't have the money to to fix it just yet. And, you know, bef he actually bought it before the pandemic. So um, he couldn't get anything done. And now he's ready to. And, but he needs a little bit of cash in hand to be able to, you know, get the contractors going, um, get a little bit of materials or, you know, just to uh, have a expense in the, in the back just to um for any delays or anything that needs to get done so um it's it's a very small deal i would say uh let me tell you the scenario right now so people can have an idea okay so see the property is free and clear and the assets value it's 110k and the rehab budget it's um actually almost 100k but the arv is 260. now this bar is, is a newbie okay mm -hmm. you guys can keep that in mind and but his fico is above 700 plus he only has this one property in his pocket i mean his track record and of course his primary um but since this property is free and clear we're taking in consideration to lend the rehab budget, which is 100K. He want, he doesn't want like up to 65 of the loan to cost because or cash out because, I mean, it wouldn't make sense for us to even do something like that, especially with someone that has, that has no experience. But he only asked for about 40,000 um, of initial draw, which is the cash out. And that's something that we can do. If the assets value is 110, there's not much money in stake to lose. So just for an example on this one, we are able to say, yes, we can consider it because um, 
the property is pretty clear. So not mm -hmm. a lot of our money is in stake. Oh, great. And tell me uh, where people can learn more about fix and flip these days. Um, I would say call us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would say give us a call. We're able to give you more information. Um, you know, there's also a lot of uh, on our different platforms, Facebook, um, YouTube, um, LinkedIn. It's everywhere. And let's not forget bigger pockets. Oh, that's uh, right. Bigger pockets. Bigger, bigger pockets. pockets. We are very active there. And we also are very active. Yes. And that's where a lot of our Illinois customers are coming from. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy with bigger pockets. And you are taking care of our bigger pockets <laughs> platform. So please. Yes, if somebody if somebody just know my face, they, they probably saw me on bigger pockets because um I manage our bigger pockets platform and uh, I have to say that I'm also proud of bigger pockets, considering it as my my baby because I'm all all into that. Uh, bigger pocket is a great place, and you can just search for uh, our company or for me. You can look for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can talk there or you can call us, give us a call, send us an email. And um, the most uh, important thing is that we are very fast in answering. And um, if we have to say no, we are very fast and no also, unfortunately. But, but that is just the business at this time. Yeah. No, and I like it because, um, you know, a lot of people from there, are are coming with um, different types of scenarios and not only for fix and flips which is good because you know we don't only we don't only do fix and flips but we do a lot of other programs so even if we're not able to do it as a fix and flip program we're able to help them out in a different type of loan program or set it up as a different so we're able to structure your loan basically um and so that's what i like so please, 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 everybody, anyone who's listening to us right now, um, go ahead and give us a call and we're able to help you structure your loan if it's even hard money or fix and flip or um, conventional lending. I mean, I think we got it. We got all the programs. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we have it all covered. And we're very approachable, so uh, don't think that we are just so close and and strict with the rules. We like to chat with people. We also exchange experience, uh, something that we have, some that you guys have. So um, give us a call at any time and just chit chat with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it makes it easier for them by email, I think email it's even better we are like melita said we we're very fast responding um you know just screen your deal very quickly we're able to tell you if there's a deal or no deal well time is money so exactly we don't have to <laughs> we don't have that luxury to spend it just like that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. because we want just to make it more and to make more money with our borrowers not not just for ourselves we're not that kind of company mm -hmm. Because people matter. people matter. In this kind of job, people matter. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, it was great. It was it was great. I mean, um, chit chatting with you today. <laughs> and I'm very happy to um, have helped uh, 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 anyone that is listening to us right now. And um, I look forward to listening to or reading more scenarios coming up this week. Yes, I hope that we will have some new inquiries and some new interesting deals to uh, work with. Uh, as Ivy said, just don't be scared and don't be just closed for us. Um, find us on the Bigger Pockets platform, on YouTube. Uh, you can just give us a call if that's what you prefer. In written form, it's a little bit easier for us and for you just to, to track the, the deal from the start till the end. and. I hope that we'll hear from, from you guys soon. Abby, before we start with the questions, just let us know about the rates and terms and what is required for submission. 
Um, well, right now uh, we have really good uh, guidelines. Um, we're lending starting rates starting at 10%, loan amounts from 100 uh, to uh, 2 million, 3 million in some cases. And um, we're taking, finally, we're taking multifamily in. So we're not only doing one to four, we're lending nationwide. Uh, the terms um, is still 12 months only of interest only and um, and our fees are, are very low they're not a, they're not that high we're able to work our fees based on the loan amounts and for submissions I mean if you're ready to move your deal forward if you feel more comfortable just giving us a scenario that's fine um, a scenario will work and then after you're ready to move forward with the soft code that we give you then we required a uh, application credit report just to have for a file but even though we do run your credit once you're ready to move forward um, and the purchase contract uh, your rehab budget is very important and um, and your track record and uh, your personal financial statement so those are the only requirements for initial submission to get an LOI from us. And, and then it's, it's, it's your choice to move forward or not. <laughs> well, thank you for this explanation. And now we can go to the questions. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being on this financial webinar with Universal Com Commercial Capital. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I am Linda Pliagas with Realty 411 and Real Estate Wealth Magazine. Now, we have Ivy and Eric with us today, and they're going to be answering all your questions. And I actually have some questions myself that I want to ask. So welcome, Ivy and Eric. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm Hi, doing Linda. very well. How are you doing, Ivy? Hi, Eric. Thank Hi. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for um, the wonderful video that you put together just for our viewers and our guests today. It was very informative and answered a lot of questions, but I do have some other questions and our guests who are live right now on this webinar, they have some questions that they would like to ask too. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, we have a lot of readers around the country, not just in California. Do you lend in all states? Um, yes, we do. We do, all, we do lend all over the countries, but like uh, we are very active in California, Texas, Illinois, New York, and Florida. Those are the five main states that we do a lot of business. But like if we have loan from Colorado, Oregon, Minnesota, we would do it. Wonderful, wonderful. Hmm? Fantastic. Now, another question that we have is, what are some of your favorite types of properties that UCC prefers to fund? Is it residential, commercial, or a little bit of both? Mm, it is the least complicated and easy to fund. It's single family, residential, because it's pretty simple, you know, a single house, a simple construction budget, and we can make decision on the right real quick for those kind of loans. However, I realize that our client need our expertise the most on the commercial space. It's much more complicated for a vacant building, for the just finished building, just finished completion, apartment complex, no tenant. They need some bridge loan before they can get a permanent financing. So, so I would say residential is the easiest, easy to fund, easy to make decision, but our client come to us a lot for much more complicated deals, such as commercial um, properties. Wonderful, wonderful. That mm -hmm. actually leads me to my next question. What about unique properties like storage facilities, industrial space, 
churches? Do you lend on properties like of those of those nature, like those? Yeah, we do lend on all property assets except raw land, which we don't do. For raw land, we only do vertical. That means all the entitlement are in place. Beside that, we do all kind of like uh, property types. However, you know, whether it is income producing or non-income producing, it is a different story when we underwrite. Uh, another thing we do only in California is we one of the few companies that would do cannabis related retail store only. We don't do agriculture. We don't do greenhouse, but if it's a retail store in a major urban center, we would do it. And we also do office complex with like cannabis related tenant, shopping center with adult entertainment, cannabis related tenant. Those are the, the unique type of property that we would land on too. Wonderful. Well, you certainly have a wide variety of lending options. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Now, what's happening right now with interest rates? I know that we're seeing them at an all-time low. Is this going to affect the interest rate that they would acquire in a private loan, in a, in a hard money loan? How does that work? You know what? In the private money loan, the, the main thing that our client is looking for is a loan amount, the loan they need. They're not really much into like interest rate like the house you are living in your primary residence you know uh, they need the money enough for them to get their project done in a timely manner so so interest rate doesn't have that much fluctuation in the harmony space for fix and flip it's always lowest 7.99 average 89 percent highest for inexperienced uh, Client 10, 11 percent. You know, even if the rate goes down on the market, it doesn't affect the rate on, on the fix and flip spread that much. It remains constant. But what people need is the loan amount. That's what they're looking for. You know, they don't want 4 percent and they are $30,000 short. They rather pay a little bit higher rate, but they have enough to finish their project. That, that is the nature of the fix and flip space. Wonderful, wonderful. And we have some fantastic questions now from our guests. Okay. Uh, for example, um, one of our guests, his name is, let me see here, Dan. Does underwriting require years of taxes to be submitted and what are your origination fees for loans? Great question. Okay, I would uh, let Ivy answer this question. Okay, um, hi. Uh, well, we do not require tax returns for our fix and flip deals at all. Uh, no W-2s needed. We don't verify income uh, from our borrowers. Um, and our origination fees really depends on the loan amount. Um, you know, uh, what kind of loan amount are you bringing in? The lowest, uh, of course, will have more origination fee and the highest will have less. Linda? Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> wonderful. Now, I'm just reviewing all the questions because we did, we do have quite a few questions here. Um, can you, one gentleman, Gary, would like to know, do you have a minimum amount that you will lend on? And what is the time frame from application to close? Um, well, uh, there is a minimum. Uh, we like to see loans amount, loan amounts in the 100K um, minimum. And um, what was the next question? <laughs> no problem. Um, the time frame from the application to the close, what, what is your typical time frame for that? 
Okay, right now it's moving a lot faster. Um, I would say a few months ago, it was just taking about maybe three weeks or more. But right now, it's um, appraisers are being more diligent um, with their time frame, And so it really depends on each state too. Um, but for example, for the state of California, we're able to get appraisals back within five days. Um, so we're looking at closing, uh, targeting, uh, targeting more like a two week or two and a half weeks, I would say. Wonderful. What about prepayment penalty? Um, one of our guests wants to know, is there a prepayment penalty? Um, no, we don't have prepayment penalty in our fix and flip deals. Um, uh, we only have that when it's uh, hard money or a conventional loan or commercial property, a long-term rental uh, loan program, but not in this case. For fix and flips, we do not have a uh, prepayment penalty. Wonderful. Now, Gary also would like to know if you could please go over your underwriting policies or underwriting guidelines. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, well, uh, we when we look at a deal, um, we do the calculations first that we don't want to see um, the ARV being um, higher than uh, 65%. Right now, we have changed our guidelines, by the way. It's actually 75% ARV. And we're lending up to 85% of the loan to cost which means your initial draw will be up to 85%. And um, it's, it's been, and it's always gonna be 100% of the rehab. Uh, our minimum FICO requirement is still 620. Again, we are still looking for uh, experienced flippers, but we have um, changed our guidelines a little bit to have newbies, but with at least two flips or two rentals um, in the last three years. And, um, and I think that's about it. Uh, I, I can go over conditions and things that you need to send over to me, um, which is, a, it's, it's just the basic scenario at first. And then after that is just bringing in documentation. Uh, we like to see the purchase contract in place. We like to see the rehab budget. Um, uh, we like to see uh, the track record experience, the credit report. Now, um, even if you have a low FICO, I would just uh, advise borrowers that don't be afraid if you have late payments on your credit report or, um, or uh, bankruptcies back eight or five years ago. Um, we just wanna see that you're able to give us an explanation on those things. And we will request a letter of explanation. So don't be fed up if we ask you for those items. Um, but that's about it. Um, you can just uh, send us a short scenario over by email and we will let you know if your deal it's um, pre-approved or, uh, or it's ready to go. Can you please share with us your contact information, Ivy? And I will also post it on the chat so people can have it. Of course. Um, my phone number is 213-784-784. 2497 and uh, my email is ivy at com. Can you repeat your phone number once again, please? Of course. 213-784-2497. Um, Wonderful. Great. So Thank I did... You. I did post the phone number up on the chat for everybody. Um, I will also post their, their URL shortly. Um, but we have some other questions. Here we go. Any experience, uh, Eric Preston would like to know, any experience on residential single family ADU development lending or perhaps a duplex? and an ADU development lending? Eric, great question. A lot of people making wonderful money on ADUs right now. Mm -hmm. I can let Eric um, answer that. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, we, we do fund ADU. We are very familiar with it, especially in Orange County, California, when there's a shortage of like rental property. However, uh, we would need to see a lot more than a fix and, and a straight fix and flip deal, like architect drawing or what is ADU being built. Uh, so um, send us over, you know, the, the working plan, the budget for the ADU beside, beside the, the, the fix and flip construction budget because some people they do at the same time. They fix and flip the, the primary house and, 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 and they also do the ADU unit. So it's a mixture between fix and flip and ground up construction. But we, we are familiar with those deals and we, we will fund it if it's the right deal. Great, thank you, Eric. Now, mm -hmm. James Espinosa wants to know, will you be recording this because I can't stay, I'm working on a property tour right now. <laughs> yes, James, we are recording this wonderful financial webinar and you will be able to review it and watch it again. We'll have it posted on our YouTube, YouTube channel as well as on all of our websites. So definitely keep working on that deal you have right now because you'll be able to see this later. Now let's go on to another question. For, okay, let's see, we answered that one already. Now, do you require contracting, contractor bids? license bonds for the rehab portion of the loan i guess you know what if they want to just hire handy men in, instead to repair or rehab the property instead of a licensed contractor how does that work eric and ivy so ivy do you want to answer that okay um well on we really don't verify who you want to use when it's a light rehab because you could be doing the job yourself but when it has to do with extension or square footage added and things like that again uh, the architect letter will be requested there has to be an architect obviously to um, know exactly how much of a, an expansion you're doing and we want to see that you have the experience or the ability enough to not what you're doing so we do want to see a general contractor that's licensed and ready to go uh, or you yourself if you're doing the job yourself we want to see that experience so um yeah i don't know if you want to add something to that eric and um and beside the contractor license remember we always require a builder liability insurance so, so, so keep that in mind, uh, even though you do a, a live rehab, you know, we might ask for such insurance. So check with your insurance agent beforehand because that policy can be expensive sometimes. Yeah, that's all I need to add. Wonderful, great information. This is really informative, Eric and Ivy. Thank you so much for being on this webinar and helping more of our readers get their deals done. You know, we want to help them make as much money as possible. There's a lot of properties right now that are great for rehabbing or buy and holding. And we foresee that there's going to be even a lot more opportunities coming up because of the pandemic, which is a question I would like to ask Ivy and Eric, how has COVID-19 changed your business? Are you seeing less, more? What's going on? Let me answer this one. Surprisingly, as is myself, uh, everything seemed to be normal. You know, we expect to see a drop in the business, but no, people still buy property, people still rehab, people still flip it. Uh, so, so it's pretty normal, except on the landing side, on our side, there was a tremendous change 
the last two months, but like we are back to normal too. Like before we are back to normal, we cut down on the LTV, we raise the rate, we raise the fee, but the demand still there. And luckily about three weeks or a month ago, we, we pull back everything to normal. You know, we bring back, we bring back up the LTC, we bring back up the ARV like IV said, from 65% ARV, we brought it up to like 75%. ARV right now, rate went up to like 11% sometime during April or May, but now we're back to like 7.99 for like experience flipper. Uh, averagely, it's about 9%. So, so the demand is the same. On the supply side, we pull back to the, the, the normal um, situation. That's what I, 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 I want to say. Wonderful. Also, um, Ivy, Gilbert would like your email address one more time. If you could please share that with our listeners and say it slowly so I can type it in the chat, please. Of course, Linda. Uh, our email or my email, it's Ivy, I V as in Victor Y, at Universal Commercial Capital T A L. Wonderful. I just posted it on the chat for yeah. everyone to be able to paste that as well. Now, one of our listeners, LF Partners, would like to know, will professional architectural and project management experience count for residential and commercial lending experience? Okay. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, well, yes, we do take in consideration um, that experience. If you don't have projects that you have done yourself as individual or as yourself, um, we are taking that experience of general contractors or architects doing projects for other um, people. So yes, it, it is counted. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and Gary would like to know, Eric, are you noticing the lending activity being normal? in California only, or do you think they're no, normal on a nationwide level? I think it's normal on the nationwide level. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I think thing pretty much come back to the same as before, at least on the lending side. Like I say, our ARV back to normal, our rate went out back to like the pre-COVID period, our fee went out, back to the pre-COVID period, so, and, and it's nationwide, because we do land in Texas, Florida, Illinois, New York, so we know. We know the market in those states too. Wonderful. That's great. Now, do you have anything else that you would like to add, Ivy or Eric? Um, well, I would like to say that our guidelines have definitely changed and they have changed for good, better. And so um, just sent over a scenario, a brief scenario, if you already have one or if you're already looking for something as, a, as an investor and you just want to know if you would qualify or not based on that scenario, we can let you know right away. Um, but we don't only do fix and flips. <laughs> So we are able to structure your deal and help you structure your deal if it's not a fix and flip um, into another one of our loan programs. So I'll be happy to help you. If, if you contact me, that's by phone or email, I will answer right away. And Gary would like to know what percentage of applications normally close? Uh, well, right now we are definitely busy, very, very busy. Um, 
we're closing a very high volume and I would say I'm very happy for that. Um, even during this situation that we're going through. So uh, I can't say a percentage because it really depends on each scenario coming in. We don't, I would love to approve everything that comes my way. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not possible, but um, yeah, we, we do have a very high volume. Yeah. Wonderful. I want to add something in here. You know what, our approval ratio is pretty high maybe 90% or over because we, we screen loan before. We look at the deal when it is submitted and we know right away what and what. A lot of time is approved, but the loan amount is not enough for the client, so we have to find a solution for them. But once we say, please send us more paperwork, more or less, the loan will be funded. Otherwise, we would have rejected the loan within 24 hours. Anyway. Wonderful. Great. Ivy, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, no, not at this point. Um, just give us a call and contact us. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Wonderful. Well, folks, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on our financial webinar. We are here to help you close more deals and to learn how to be a more savvy, educated investor. And we wanna thank Universal Commercial Capital for joining us on this informative webinar. We also would like you to reach out to them to see if they can find your next deal. So be sure to call them. I also would like to share their 1-800 number, 1-888-334-9039. And Ivy's email address is, once again, ivy at universalcommercialcapital.com. From all of us here at Realty 411, we want to thank you for joining us once again, and you have a wonderful weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Have a nice thank weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Linda. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.